one of the things that um, we've been thinking about or talking about is, you know, what is the role of shepherd teachers in movements? And I think it's an important question. Um, as, I, as I look at um, the Internet, I see a lot of people leveling accusations against CPM or DMM, church plant movement or disciple making movement methodologies, accusing them of being shallow or weak. And I think that hopefully this can answer some of those questions. The reality is that, that uh, there's a lot of potential for problems in CPM and DMM because of the potential speed, not the guaranteed speed. Nobody's saying guaranteed speed, but the potential speed at which things can unfold. And so what I wanted to talk about is the role of the established church. Um, and so, for example, the, the church in, in the West, you know, or the church in the global north, whatever you want to say. And then from there, talk about how this church can come alongside emerging movements, budding movements, and, and be a benefit. And so that all of the hundreds of years, the you know, 2,000 years of church history and, and study and all these kinds of things can be beneficial instead of problematic. And so uh, basically when you look at a movement, there's a couple key roles here. And there's the, this role, I'm going to call this the kind of the coach or the, the catalytic coach. And this person is typically an outsider, especially in the beginning. And this catalytic coach is coming alongside an insider. Now, most movements that in the kind of the last 10 years that have really grown have come from near culture insiders, maybe who already are believers, but they've never been trained with the tools or released with authority to go and make disciples and plant churches. And so this catalytic coach is kind of from the outside in, uh, coming alongside and casting vision and um, laying a theological framework from the word of tools and philosophy and methodology. And all of this ideally is happening through a process of discovery. Because when you discover something yourself, you have like an 85% buy-in instead of a 15% buy-in. And so this catalytic coach doesn't necessarily live in the country or live in the area. They're providing this for the insider. And then the insider is going and they're trying to catalyze within their own area, you know, making disciples who make disciples and that sort of thing. Um, so as this begins to progress and we see some new churches formed, the reality is these churches will most likely be a mess. Now, I want to encourage us here because it's easy to think, well, that's a mess and therefore it's wrong. But that's not what we see throughout the New Testament. And a really great example of this is the, the church on the island of Crete, which we see in the book of Titus. We see in Titus chapter 1, Paul writing to Titus says, The reason I left you in Crete was that you might put in order what was left unfinished and appoint elders in every town. And he goes through the uh, qualifications. Sorry about that. I got a phone call right in the middle. Um, so in, in Titus, I was saying that Paul says that he left Titus in Crete to put in order that which was basically a mess. And so in light of that, he says he gives them qualifications for elders, talking about character, um, talking about competency and calling. And then he says in verse 9, he must hold firmly to the trustworthy message as that has been taught, so that he can encourage others by sound doctrine and refute those who oppose it. And so the point here is, when you have a little bit of a mess, how do you put it into order? Well, how has God always brought order out of chaos? Genesis 1, how does God bring order out of chaos? How does he speak over the chaos? He speaks with his word over the chaos. Jesus comes as the word into the chaos of the darkness to form it. And so in the same way, what does God do? He always brings order out of chaos with his word. And this is what I think the established church can provide. And so if you think about it from this perspective, the established church, which is the kind of the shepherds and the uh, teachers, right? Those, those two primary giftings or callings or offices, whatever your, whatever your personal belief on that is, I don't really care. The issue is that you have people who are shepherd personalities and teacher personalities and what they need to do is come alongside this group and they need to provide order via the word, okay? 
And one of the ways that that happens is, for example, uh, coming in for a week and just doing a series of discovery studies um, from, let's say, Genesis to Revelation so that you get a big picture understanding of the Old Testament and the New Testament, maybe going through the pastorals, right? And just doing a discovery study over the course of a week. So you're staying within the DNA of the movement or of the potential movement by, set, by doing discovery studies, by um, still emphasizing the fact that it's about the Word and it's about the Holy Spirit, right? And it's about obedience. And so you're, you're maintaining the DNA of this group, but you're providing the framework so that you can bring order via the Word. And so it's easy to say, well, I don't know where we fit in because we are teachers and I'm a professor and you have all this budding movement. Realize that because of our giftings, everybody's different. And so the catalytic coach, that's more of your apostolic, prophetic, even evangelist type personality. They're providing vision and theology and, and philosophy and methodology through discovery study, kind of in, in the most broad levels, that God has a heart for every person, every, every place, every nation, um, that he has given us the authority to go and make disciples, commanded us to do so. And so the, we can equip people with simple tools philosophically because simple things multiply, and then we give them the tools. Now, all of these things are needed. We can't just go straight for the tools, right, and, and skip abiding and skip philosophy and skip theology. But the point is the coach is doing it in a way so as to empower the insider. And then the coach has this reciprocal relationship with the home base, so to speak. It may be ascending church. It could be, um, it could be a local church, whatever it might be. But the idea is that the coach is providing the vision and the coaching, and then the established church, the shepherd teachers, can come alongside, staying within the same DNA framework to provide order via the Word. And that comes with kind of um, short trainings, like I said, Genesis to Revelation, the pastorals, an overview of marriage, things like this. But the, uh, the important part is that it's happening within the DNA. Where no one is saying that this should happen in isolation, in a bubble where everything is ignored and, and you kind of pretend like we're not in a global world. We are in a global world. And so what can the shepherd teachers, the established church offer? The same thing that Paul told Timothy to, or Titus to offer. He told Titus to offer order via the word. That's why it was sound doctrine, because how do you bring order out of chaos? You bring it with the word. And Titus was an external person put in Crete to provide order. And so, listen, don't fear the mess. The mess is, ha listen, having a baby is messy. Having a family is messy. Planting a church is messy. If it's not messy, I'm not so sure that it's, it, it's, it's really real, right? The New Testament church was messy. It wasn't perfect. People were sleeping with their mother-in-law. It was a mess. So how, what do you do in light of the mess? You provide order via the word. And so the catalytic coach is providing that coaching and that vision casting to keep the movement going forward. And the shepherd teachers as external um, forces can provide order via the word by staying within this framework. And here's a really interesting thing. Eventually, this will become the insider and the insider will become the coach. And as churches, healthy churches emerge in these movements, they'll provide the shepherd teaching. And so the point is, eventually this will go from being an external force to an internal force. And, and that's what we hope for, right? We hope for local, healthy, uh, indigenous church planting movements um, because disciples are being made. And so it may begin as a mess, but because of the order that is provided via the word, staying within the DNA of the, of the heart culture and of the heart people, of the the movement, whatever is happening there, um, we can come alongside and we can help provide order because of the word as we offer what God has given us.